Okay, so for surveying equipment as it developed, uh, compass came in. That's about 100,000 AD in China. And then a telescope, which was from the 1600s in Europe. And they started coming up with some pretty fine instruments now. A transit to measure angles and a level. Okay, so those were things that were developed. You know, if you look at the 1700s, they had both of those instruments and were out there surveying with them. Nowadays, if you were the... Uh, a, uh, survey company, there, there's much more modern equipment. It, it's really gotten very high tech. There's equipment that uses lasers to measure distance. Of course, we use satellites to measure position and inertial systems. So all of those are used. We also use aerial photography now. So there's any number of ways to do surveying. Um, if you're with a kind of a, a medium-sized survey company, you know, certainly you'll be using a tape and a level and a theodolite to turn an angle, you use an electronic distance measurement device called an EDM to measure a distance. And a total station then is a combination of a theodolite and an EDM. Okay? You'll probably also have GPS equipment, which uses uh, data from satellites to measure position. And you'll, you might have a laser scanning device that allows you to measure surfaces by shooting thousands of lasers uh, off and getting the reflection coming back to your receiver. So that's kind of some of the standard gear you might have if you work for a smaller survey company these days. And you know, it's just expanding exponentially. You might also have drones that are taking aerial photographs. There's all sorts of different things you could be using. So that's a tape, okay. There's a, a level with a rod that's used to measure elevation. There's a total station with a mirror, a, a prism there. You'll use that to measure distance, and you can turn angles with that device. There's a survey level GPS. Okay, these are much, uh, much finer instruments than what you might uh, carry around in your pocket if you're out hiking or, you know, or if you're using your cell phone or whatever. That's a, that's a survey level GPS, so a, a more a finer instrument, um, more expensive, and measures with much more precision than, than you would find uh, just, you know, for kind of commercially available. Okay. All right, now if you're surveying, what you do is you, start, you have to start with something that you know. You can't just go off and survey, you know, without some sort of what we call control. All right, so we come off of control is what we do. Those are the points that we know. Generally speaking, you've got to know a point and a line. Now, if you're way back uh, a long time ago and you needed to establish control that was really, that you really knew something like latitude and longitude on the earth, you'd probably take star shots. It's probably what you would do to establish that, okay? Um, nowadays, we come off of known points on the ground or maybe uh, satellites, which we know the position of. Those are the, the things we reference to. But generally speaking, you've got to start with control. Surveying then comes off of control and establishes the location of new points and lines. That's what it does. So to be able to do this, you've got to be able to do the math, geometry and trig particularly. But also other surveying skills that are important are land law, how to use this complicated equipment, and how to run a crew. Those are the things you'd want to be able to do if you want to do well at this. Okay? And I will mention that there's a lot of uh, going to be a lot of openings in the surveying field as there are in a lot of the technical fields because a lot of people are retiring now. And if it's something you're interested in, you know, I'd encourage you to pursue this as a profession. It's it's really interesting work. You get outside, you work inside, you work with math and technology. It's, it's interesting. It's fun. Okay. All right. Now, generally speaking, there's different types of surveying. Okay. I'm on page 112 if you're in your book. Um, now, there's lots of different kinds, but some of the common types. First is land surveying. Okay. Now, land surveying, you establish property boundaries. Okay, people care a lot where their property's at. So you need high levels of precision and accuracy. So land surveying, one of the main rules is don't make errors or mistakes, I guess I should say. Because if you start making mistakes on property boundaries, you can get into a lot of trouble pretty fast, okay? Construction is another type of surveying. 
what you do in construction surveying is set up control and set construction stakes. It's faster and less precision and accuracy than land. If you're setting somebody's property corner, you want that right on the mark. But if you're setting a reference point to put a manhole in the ground, yeah, you can get within, we used to say within a pie plate and you're good, okay? It's all right. And so the reason I'm mentioning this is you move faster in construction than you do in land surveying because it's a little different mentality out there, okay? Geodetic cons considers the curvature of the earth. That's high math and high technology to get that figured out. And I, I'm mentioning this because I remember when I was uh, working, we, we had a lot of construction work at the company I was with, and they needed an extra hand there, so they got their geodetic surveyor out there to do construction surveying. And that didn't go quite as well as they might have liked because the geodetic surveyor wanted to measure everything twice and get everything right on the dime. And that's just not how you construction survey. When you construction survey, you get the points in the ground and you get down the road. I mean, you, 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 you do it right. You don't mess up, but you don't waste time in your construction survey. <laughs> you get those stakes in the ground and, and you, you keep moving, okay? I even remember a friend of mine, I was on the survey crew, he asked the crew doing the curb, you know, the curb and gutter. Nowadays, they use machines a lot to do that, but back in the day, they used uh, <laughs> big, big people that carried quite comfortable swinging a sledgehammer around with one hand to get those forms in the ground and get that stuff poured. And my, uh, my friend asked one of them how, how he was doing. How are you doing, man? And he said, I'm right on your tail. Get those sticks in the ground. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, they got a certain mentality. Get the stuff in the ground, get down the road. Okay, that's, that's construction surveying, okay? All right, so here's a land survey. When you do a land survey, you, you submit it to the county. So lots of legalese, a lot of jargon here, a little bit of a line map that shows this property boundary. This one particular survey, the intent here was to split this five acre parcel in half. So they set two corners here, two monuments, to get that line established to split the line in half, okay? So that was a legal document that has to be submitted to the county. So, you know, you want to be sure you're getting that right and have all your descriptions on here done. And we've got all the sign-offs for everybody on this project, the landowners, the tax assessor, the county surveyor, all that. Everybody has to sign that because that's a legal document, okay? Construction surveying, there's a, some plan and profile drawings of a road with construction surveying. What the contractor is going to want to know is where do I put that manhole? So you're going to stake that out. Um, although it is getting a little bit fancier these days, depending on the type of project you're working on. Um, but you might set stakes for the contractor so they know where to put that manhole. Okay. Geodetic surveying, if you're surveying I-5, which was done in the early 60s, they had to consider the curvature of the earth to get that done and get that accurately modeled. So that's a higher level of surveying. Construction surveying, generally you assume everything's a flat plane, that's fine. But that's not the case with geodetic surveying. You've got to consider the curvature of the Earth. Okay. All right, if you really want to get into this, you want to become a registered land surveyor. It's on page 113. Okay. A registered land surveyor is licensed by the state board. So to be a registered land surveyor, you have to be licensed. Okay. Now, the reason you would need to be a land surveyor is if you're going to work with property, if you're going to set property corners you have to be a registered land surveyor. To be a registered land surveyor, you've got to be licensed by the state. You have to have a certain amount of education. You have to pass the LSIT test, LS Land Surveyor and Training Test. You have to have a certain amount of experience. How much depends on the education you've got. Then you've got to pass the state professional exam. Okay. So that's what you've got to do to be a registered land surveyor. You can get the required education through OSU if you get an engineering degree and take a certain number of surveying credits. Okay. There's also OIT, which is here in the state, which has a full surveying degree. It's now called geomatics is the term for that. That's what they call surveying these days. Okay, so a registered land surveyor has to stamp the drawing that is turned into the county so for the county to accept this drawing, it had to be stamped right there by a registered land surveyor. That's the deal. Okay. All right, let's talk about units. And I think this is on that staple stuff that I gave you. 
Now, first thing is, is we still use feet in America when we survey, okay? We don't use meters yet. There's, every now and again we make a push at trying to use meters and, and use metric units, but we haven't quite done it yet, okay? However, we use decimal feet. I would not report a distance as 47 feet 6 inches. I don't use inches when I survey. They're difficult units to work with. What I use are decimal feet. So I don't divide a foot into 12 inches. I divide it into tenths of a foot. You can see why. These are equivalent distances here. You can see which side's a lot easier to add and do the math with. It's the right-hand side, okay? It's just decimal. I can add it up. So, you know, I got five, carry the one, I think I get a four, carry the one, I get a two, so that's 62.45, I think, easy enough. This side, oh boy, you know, what do I got to do? Find the least common denominator on the fraction of the inch, add up the fractions of inches, carry over in inches, and carry 12 inches over. Yeah, question? 35. Is that one thing? Oh, yeah, I created one, but I didn't need to, did I? Okay, my bad. Thanks. Okay, so here's why we do decimal feet. So that is one thing I'll get a little particular about in this class, is I don't want to hear the word inches in here, because we don't use inches, and that's important to know. Okay? We do decimal feet. That's how we lay stuff out. Okay. So if you look at our equipment, here's a, a rod. There's the red is the even feet. There's four feet and five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it goes to five. Okay? So we're not talking 12 inches there. We're talking tenths. Same thing between the tenths. We got 10 marks again because those are hundredths. Okay? We don't do inches. We do decimal feet. Okay? Unfortunately, we use difficult units for angles. We use nice, uh, easy units for lengths that are easy to work with, but the angular units are difficult because we use one circle as 360 degrees, but we got to measure a lot tighter than a degree. So we take a degree and we break it into 60 minutes. So one degree is 60 minutes, but even that isn't a fine enough measure. So we take a minute and break that into 60 seconds. Okay. Kind of an odd unit to work with, but that's how we do that. Um, so if you look at these lines, they're called out with uh, bearings. And I know that's not, you can't read that, but that's taken out to a second of angular measurement. A second is very small. If you're shooting a four mile line and you turn a second of angle, you're gonna move over about a tenth of a foot, four miles out. So it's a very, very small measurement. Okay. But that's how that's done. So the angular units are degrees, minutes, and seconds. So what's 41.5 degrees? What do we got? For, what would that be in DMS, degrees, minutes, and seconds? Forty-one degrees, how many minutes? Yeah. There you go, 30, all right? Half a, a degree is half of 60 minutes. About uh, 0.25 degrees, what do we got? Hmm. Yeah, a quarter, right? Okay, so that's the unit system we're gonna work with. Now, if I wanna go back into decimal, what, 30 minutes would be half of a degree if I'm going back into decimal for some reason. Okay. Now the Army Corps of Engineers does a lot of uh, surveying. They actually came up with a nice system that was easier to work with. They created something called gradients. A right angle is 100 grads and everything was decimal. Nice and easy to work with, but nobody does it, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's, it's just easier to work with. But it's not used much. Okay. Too bad. Right, now we work with numbers. Surveyors measure stuff. They care about this, okay? We round stuff. We don't truncate. Truncate means to cut things off. We don't do that. We round, okay? So to round, we, we uh, 
identify what we're rounding to, tenths, hundredths, whatever. And then we look at the column to the right of that. If that number is five or bigger, we round up. Less than five, we round down. Okay, that's how that goes. So what, what are we gonna round that to? If we're going to the hundredth, which is a common survey uh, precision there. 63.43, right? Yeah, I guess I'm making all sorts of mistakes here, aren't I? Thanks. Forgot my pen today, so I'm having struggling a little bit. There we go. All right. Now, if you truncate, that would be 67.42. Now, that may not seem like a bunch of difference there, but surveyors are going to get mad about that. They're not going to like that at all if you truncate. Because that's, see, they measure stuff for a living. That's what they do. Okay. So if we round these things out, so if we're going to the hundredth, we look at the column, which would be the thousandth column past the hundredth. Five or bigger, we round up. Four or less than five, we round down. Okay. We okay with that? So remember to round. I'll, I'll be watching that a little bit, kind of for your own good, because I don't want some mean uh, party chief getting mad at you when you go to work, okay? Let's get that figured out. We round, we don't truncate, okay? Okay, now significant figures. Again, surveyors care about this stuff because they, they measure stuff for a living. Only write down, only report what you measure. Okay. Normally we measure to the hundredth of a foot. When doing calculations, carry all your digits through, then round. Okay. So I'm on page uh, 115 is about where I'm at. All right. So let's say I measure this line, this... Uh, from here to here. Now here are two different things I could report this as. And again, to a surveyor, these are going to be different. What's the difference there? Yeah. The difference isn't with the number, it's it's how you measured it. The top one, you only measured it to the tenth of a foot. That The bottom one, you measured it to the hundredth. And, and again, surveyors care about that stuff, okay? They'll, they'll get excited about that if you don't do it properly. All right? So, so keep that in mind. How about this one? Um, what's the average measurements? If you've got these two measurements you cut, what's the average of the two? If someone asks you what's the average distance, what would you tell them? Actually, I did this when I started working. I wrote that down because I, we, um, I was averaging some stuff on a job. Party chief didn't like that, <laughs> and he, he got on me. Well, what's wrong with that answer? Too many digits, see? See, we measured it to the tenth. What I did, I started writing it down as though we measured it to the hundredth. Okay? And this isn't a professor off at Harvard or something. This is a working party chief. I want to get that across. He got angry about that. Because if we get sued or something, if something happens down the line, we got this num these numbers in the book. They're not right. They're lying. We didn't measure it to the hundredth. We measured it to the tenth. Okay. So what he wanted me to write down was 64.7. That's what he wanted. Okay. Because we only measured it to the tenth. Don't go inventing things. He didn't like that. Okay. And he got on me about it. He let me know. Okay. In the polite way that surveyors do. 
Okay. So are we good with that? And, and again, this stuff might seem a little trivial to you, but to a surveyor, it's not because they measure, they measure stuff for a living. That's what they do. Okay? They take it very seriously. All right. Okay, now another little concept here on page 116 is uh, errors and mistakes. An error is a difference between what you measure and the true value. Okay? All, surveyors, all surveys have error. It's unavoidable. Okay? It's a fact of life. Now, there's different kinds of error. There's natural, which is caused by weather, the atmosphere, stuff like that. There's instrumental, which ca caused by the fact you can't make a perfect instrument that has all the, measure, all the etchings on it perfect, that has all the gears perfect. You, you can't do that. Uh, personal, sighting. Okay. You ever look across uh, on a hot day, look across asphalt, and you see some heat waves? It's kind of tough. You can't really get right on that point anymore. Okay, um, I remember trying to cite a line. We were trying to cite a property corner on the back side of a tall fence, and the fellow with a has a plumb bob on a string, and I'm trying to cite the string, and he's leaning over off of a post like this, and that that string's doing this. Right? He's he's doing the best he could, but you know we just got to work with it. Right? It's not perfect. Okay, so there's things that come up. Now, the important thing about this is there's two kinds of errors. There's systemic errors. They happen the same way over and over again. Let's say you're using a steel tape and it's a real cold day. That tape's going to shrink a little bit. It's not going to read quite right. Okay. Okay. Now, those, and those kinds of errors can accumulate because if you keep using that tape over and over again, that error is going to accumulate and you're going to get consistently shorter and you're going to get shorter and shorter and shorter the more you use it. That's, that's a problem. Surveyors don't like that. What surveyors like are random errors. They conform to the laws of probability and often even out. So we like that kind of error better because we don't need to worry about it so much because statistically it's going to even out. If that fella's over that point dangling his plumb bob and that string's swinging, what do I do? I, I, I shoot from the middle of the string, right? The middle of the swing. It ain't going to be too bad. And if that happens a hundred times, half the time I'm going to shoot to the left and half the time I'm going to shoot to the right, it's all going to come out in the wash. But if I'm using that tape and it's really cold all day and I use that tape over and over again, I consistently get short readings. And see, that that's trouble there. Okay, I don't like that. So those are the different kinds of error. All right. So we want to we want to remember that because that's something we want to be thinking about a little bit when we survey. And you know, people that do this for a living, they they are very conscientious about how they set their equipment up and how they measure and all this stuff. So they because they want to reduce the error. So. Now a mistake is not an error. A mistake is a blunder. A mistake is writing down. Um, what did I do? Was it here? 63? Didn't I have 63 up here? Or something? I did something. I don't remember what it was. There we go. Okay, yeah, right there. I did that on purpose. This is an illustration. Okay. That's a blunder, okay? That's not an error. That's just somebody writing down a wrong number. Okay? So that's different. But error is a very common thing in surveying. We've got all these things we do to adjust error out of our measurements. Okay? Okay, now another important concept here is on page 116, and this is uh, precision and accuracy. Precision is using your equipment properly, we're using very good technique, and you're going to get the same answer over and over again. That's what surveyors shoot for, is high precision. Okay? We want to use that equipment really well, we want to read it the same way, and we want repeatable results. So if we measure that same angle 100 times, we want to get pretty close to the same answer every time. Accuracy is how near a true value you are. Okay. Now, if you've got good equipment and you're in reasonable conditions, precision often leads to accuracy. 
but they're not the same thing, see. You can control precision, but you can't always control accuracy. Let's say you're using a pretty crude instrument like a compass to measure angles. You could be precise with your compass and use it really well, but you may not be really accurate with it, not like you would with a survey transit. Okay? So they're similar things, but they're not the same. Surveyors generally shoot for this because they can control it and measure it. So we got any questions on that stuff so far? All right. <coughs> right. Um, why don't we take a break here? Usually I don't go to two hours straight. It's a little much. So why don't we take a break for uh, five minutes or so, and then we'll come back in. We'll cover the rest of the stuff.